ISIS, Daesh, or Muslim radical group or extremist group is the same group. So you're talking about ISIS. So ISIS is like uh, the word ISIS. We have the Islamic State of Iraq and Lebanon, Islamic State of Iraq, Iraq and Syria. You also have ISIS with the IS. ISI, which means Islamic State of Iraq only. So you're going to have like a different date. We're going to talk about IC, Islamic State of Iraq, since 2003. We're going to talk about ISIL, Islamic State of Iraq and, and 11, which is going to be around 2014. And then we're going to be ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, which is started around 2013 too. So it's like you're going to have, it's almost the same group, but the group is having more and more ambition. Going for. So here, the most important thing is, uh, this guy named um, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, who was a former Al-Qaeda leader, he's the one who kind of laid down the idea of ISIS. And that goes back to 1999. They were talking about it, but it never was really... Um, something official. So it was like there was like a Mujahideen group. There was like a lot of uh, uh, Islamist group that has like the same goal, which was creating a Islamic state. But they never really get along because there was like a Saddam Hussein there that was way more powerful. So the idea couldn't come up. Uh, next slide, please. So here I try to put it before U.S. invasion, after U.S. invasion, and after the U.S. troop left. So I'm going to try to talk about different scenarios that happen in between each state. So here, before U.S. invasion in Iraq, in 1999, there was like a two groups, the Jamaat al Tawheed or Jihad, and there was also this group, Mujahideen Shura Council. So those are two Sunni groups that live independently since 1999, but they never had the power because Saddam's army was uh, watching over them. So when you see on uh, March of 2003, after the um, U.S. invasion, after U.S. forces came, the, this group started doing what, what we call uh, the insurgency, like trying to attack the U.S. forces. That was their main idea, trying to organize and attack the U.S. forces. But later they would go too far than that because this is a Sunni group. And then there was like a Shia group that was there too, but they never get along. So they... They didn't just stop by U.S. Army only, but they start attacking the Shia group. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later. So the Mujahideen Council, Shura Council. This, if you you can remember right here, this is where um, the Sharia was made. The one who made the Sharia. I mean, not the Sharia in the Quran, but the Sharia for Islamic State, because in their committee there was uh, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, who was the, who's gonna be the next leader of uh, ISIS was working with this group, the Mujahideen Shura Council. So that was back in 2013, uh, 2006. So the reason why I'm not focusing on the date here is because we're going to come back to the date. Next slide. So in 2003, after the U.S. invasion of Iraq, so we have like, uh, we have two major groups. We have Abu, Abu Ayyub Masri, the former Al-Qaeda member. And we have Omar al baghdadi who was a former Baptist. The former Baptist from, from Saddam Army, and this guy from the Al-Qaeda. So those guys, those are the ones who was leading. So there was a lot of speculation. Some said Abu, um, Abu Ayyub was the leader. Some people say Omar al baghdadi was the leader. But later, we will find out that Omar al baghdadi was the leader. And both has been killed by U.S. forces in 2000, 2010. But however, right after they died, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, so just the name, don't be confused with the name. We have Omar al Baghdadi, we have Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. And the name just means where they, they came from. The Umar from Baghdad, uh, or, uh, um, Abu Bakr from Baghdad. So they can, sometimes they will say Abu Ayyub al Masri, that, that means Abu Ayyub is from Masri. So that's the only one that, that's why the name is mean here. So, um, so what I was saying here, Abu Bakr, after those guys were killed, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi took the, the lead in um, 2010. And again, you won't see, that's going to be obvious in the next, uh, in the next slide. Okay. So in 2010, 
2004, according to the British newspaper, there was like, um, you know, a, a, there was a camp, a U.S. Army camp, they called the Camp Buka, that was in the Garma. So it's inside that camp that all the future leaders of the ISIS would come from. So what were do, the soldiers doing? They would write down the name of the name and the contact address of the email on the on the restaurant of their their boxers. So this is where they record everybody. So when later in 2000, in 2009, there were all those people were free because of reconciliation. So those people, they, it was easy to get in contact back with them because they had already uh, taken everybody's contact before they get released. And then you will see also that is in the same camp that Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, the actual um, leader of ISIS, was too. And this guy was there, he was leading prayers and everything. So he kind of get the trust of everybody out there. And um, next slide, please. So who leads ISIS? That was Al Abu, right now is Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. He was born in 1971 uh, in Baghdad. And he also studied like uh, the Islamic law, and uh, he had the people said that he has like a, a doctorate degree in Islamic state, uh, studies from uh, the University of Baghdad. But this guy was a shabab. A shabab means a follower. So this guy was just a simple follower. He would go to the mosque and pray and nothing else. That's it before Saddam had been killed. So he was just a normal, regular um, Muslim. But then after Saddam had been killed, so this is what I tried to put here in June 2014, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi proclaimed himself as the caliph of the, the Islamic State. Again, I'm not jumping on the date, you will see. But here, the, 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 I mean, the idea of ISIS was there, but it never became so official until the June of 2014. And the next slide, please. So I was gonna add, add one one thing about Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. So what, what this guy was doing is he never really came out like officially. He covered his face sometimes, trying to you know pretend that that is like some kind of mis uh, mystery associated with his personality. So all that helped him to influence a lot of uh, radical or young Muslims. So Abu Bakr al Baghdadi has been arrested, like I said, back in 2004. But, but and he was at the Camp Buka. After several months, they released him, saying that unconditional release because he was not considered as a threat at the moment. Next slide. So here in 2006, after Al Baghdadi and his group joined the Mujahideen Surah Council, so Al Baghdadi was he was the leader of the Mujahideen Surah Council, and he was also part of the group's senior consultative council. So he was both deciding about the law and where, to, when and where to apply the, 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 this law. And then the Mujahideen, that group, will later fuse with other groups, like five other Iraqi jihadist groups and 30 Sunni tribes. So because ISIS is Sunni group. So that's why you will see in certain part of Iraq, like Mosul, like Masri, like Anbar, they will occupy all those areas because all those areas are majority, are uh, Sunni majority. But when you go to uh, Kebarla and all those parts where Shia are made, uh, when Shia constitute the majority, they never um, they conquer those areas of uh, Iraq. So, um, so just here to say the Mujahideen, that group that was there, that fused with other Sunni tribes, they created they come up with the name of Islamic State of Iraq, which is the IC only. So at that, at that, that moment, there were no more ambition. There was no international ambition yet. There was like only local ambition. So what happened is Abu 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 Ayyub Mas Al Masri, and then um, he 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 was like the leader of Al Qaeda in Iraq. So what happened? This guy played allegiance to uh, ISIS and saying that okay. The Iraq branch of ISIS, uh, the Iraq branch of Al Qaeda, no longer existed. So we're gonna join. He invite all the pilots to join ISIS, and then he played allegiance to Abu Omar al Baghdadi. The Amir means the, 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 like, like the master of the Islamic State. So uh, next slide, please. So in 2007, Ayman al Zarqawi, 
which was another leader of uh, Al Qaeda that was that, that had been killed in 2010. But in 2007, he also announced that the Al Qaeda in Iraq no longer existed. He invited also his member to join the ISIS. That's how ISIS can get bigger and bigger. In 2009, most of the prisoners that had been already recorded was released. So now it was easy to get back in contact with them. In 2010, Abu Omar al-Baghdadi and Abu Ayyub al masri was killed by the U.S. group that I already said. Next slide, please. So right after, after that, Abu Bakr, who was the, 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 the chief of the Sharia committee, can, kind of came and took the lead after uh, Omar has been killed. So Abu Bakr came and took the lead. And then what happened in two, on May 2nd, 2011, Osama bin Laden was killed in Pakistan. So when that happened, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi kind of released a statement saying that they kind of vengeance to uh, Osama bin Laden dead. They're gonna, they want to retaliate like some violent actions. So, and then three days later, they claimed responsibility in the attack in Baghdad. But that was like a very deadly attack. In August 2011, following the outbreak of Syrian war, so they had been like, uh, al-Baghdadi was very smart because he knew that in Syria, Sunni are no majority. So what's going to happen, they try to send some more people to reinforce the presence of Sunni within the al-Nusra group. So then the movement can be a Sunni movement instead of being a Shia movement. So he sent some people. They, those people didn't create the, the al-Nusra front, but the al-Nusra front was already created. They just joined them. And then tried, next slide please. So on August 15, 2011, they, they did a lot of suicide uh, suicide attack, roadside bombing, small, small arm attack, and then a lot of things throughout the country, like everywhere, Mosul, Baghdad, Masri, and everywhere that there was like the ISIS that was represented. They kind of, uh, because what happened is like uh, in 2011, was those, all, all this movement was to have to have uh, a vengeance to um, Osama bin Laden's death. So in October 4, 2011, the U.S. Department kind of came up with a list and saying that anyone who knows any information about um, Abu, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi could be rewarded up to $10,000. Just next slide, please. So this, this is the FBI sending this, uh, this picture of him. So what happened in here in December, when all these things happened, the assault camp, those assault camps just when the U.S. has just finished withdrawal from Iraq. So that withdrawal of U.S. forces has kind of laid down a power vacuum that somebody needed to, you know, to occupy. And next slide, please. Okay. So in 2012, on December 2nd, Iraqi officer claimed, but well, that claim was not. They said they, they, they had a Baghdadi. They already killed him. But those, those claims was not true because later Al Jazeera kind of tried to deny that claim that, that no, well, the man that was was killed was not Abu Bakr al baghdadi Next slide, please. Oh, you got it. In 2013, while the rebellion of uh, of Syria was going against the uh, Assad regime, so Abu Bakr sent some relatives. So I just talked about this already. And then, because, and then when those relatives came to the, the Al Nusra, <coughs> the, uh, to the Al Nusra uh, front, they said, okay, now we're gonna put ISIS, I, ISO. Like Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, so this is because the Levant was like considered like the eastern part of Syria. So they were like, okay, you guys are gonna be part of it. So they changed the name. It was not only Islamic State of Iraq, but now it's Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. And next slide, please. So here, um, I was gonna forget something here. In April, so this they try to convince them to join. But they didn't. The, the Al Nusra, when they see the, the their interests are different, so they refuse to join them. So both groups start fighting between each other. So they start killing each other there. So this is a picture that I took from a French journal that was on October, 25 October 2013. So here you could see ISIS and their, their target. Their target was the young European, African, Asian. Um, to join them for the jihad. And here, that's very understandable because when you see the history of France, France, and um, we have like a, about seven generations of people from Morocco, Algeria, uh, Mur 
Mauritania, in West Africa too, where those countries are Muslim countries. So those people, those people migrated, migrated to France. So they were never part of the French society. So those kind of people that feel like they're a minority in France, so they, they don't call France home. So they are just waiting for the opportunity to, to, to jump on. So when ISIS you put in contact with them, so you guys are Muslim, we're Muslim too. And if you guys join us, you're gonna, you, you want to welcome you. It's like you're part of the family. So they think that they were more welcome to the ISIS than even to France because they think they were discriminated against. That makes it easier for a lot of radical Islam in France who probably has already some violence uh, actions or like a violence record, those people kind of join together and try to, um, to, to um, answer the call of ISIS. Next slide, please. So in 2014, the group has referred to itself as Islamic State, which is, again, see, this is in June 29, 2014. So this time is only ISIS, which means Islamic State. So now they are more international, they have more international ambition. They're not only Iraq or Syria, but they turn to go to around the world. So and then you will see here, this is where Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi proclaimed himself as a caliphate. So here I think I missed miss that right here. He proclaimed himself as a caliphate, which in a Muslim search, in Muslim law, you cannot proclaim yourself as the leader. People have to choose you. So that's, that make him not even legit for some people. Next slide, please. So in 2015, as of December, the group has control over territories that we have in Iraq and Syria. And they had about 2.8 to 8 million people that was either engaged in the ISIS cause or they were sympathizer with the ISIS. So you could see those people can be in Libya, Nigeria, part of West African Mali, in Afghanistan, so wherever Muslim community are there, and they was also waiting for, uh, they were also, also some of those groups were also already affiliated to Al Qaeda, but they, like Boko Haram, like uh, Ansar Din. So those group was already affiliated to Al Qaeda, but now that Al Qaeda is weakened, they all came to uh, pay allegiance to ISIS. Next slide, please. So from the, the 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 leader of ISIS, you will see those leaders like four members of ISIS military council, seven of the governor, 12 of the province, and the minister of the finance, all those people came from the Kambuka. And those people were like uh, some executive of ISIS, about 100 and 160 officers of Saddam army. So those, after Saddam was killed, those people were in the street, just waiting for the opportunity. And then that was the, the right opportunity for them to reject power of whatever they know how to do. Um, next slide, please. On August 8, 2015, so the number two of ISIS, which is the Fadel Ayyad, this guy, they, they also call him Abu Mutaz. He was a military major of Salam's army. The number three, Abu Ali Anbar, he was also an ex baptist of the, of the Salam's army. And you will see another character, this guy, Tahal Saddam, he was also a former army colonel of Saddam's army. So those guys have a lot of combat experience. But this guy especially, he kind of says a lot of equipment from Saddam, Saddam Hussein's army that he had. It. So he handed all those arms to, um, to the ISIS. Next slide, please. So why do people join ISIS? So like I said, the propaganda of the recruitment process people who feel like minority and discriminated against them in the country where they, they, they are. And the Orthodox Muslim also, the Orthodox Muslims are like the fundamental radical Muslims. So they just believe whatever you tell them. And they, whatever you say is come from the Quran, they don't even try to understand. If it is from the Quran, then we follow in it. So that's how ISIS get all those people, because they take some verse of the Quran and take them out of context. And uh, next slide, please, I will see, uh, I'll give you an example of that. So why do people join ISIS? So we, we still have the refugees who are just out of the business or homeless. They don't have no home. So just waiting for no or any opportunity to be safe or to have like a shelter, you know, or to, 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 um, to have food, you know. So they could join ISIS for those causes. And if, so from the young, younger recruit, a lot of younger recruit, you see how people 
play video games and stuff. It's all about killing, about victory. So the fact that ISIS is all, all, always portrayed with uh, all these violence actions and all those, uh, you know, success because they kind of, um, they, they, um, I think, I think they kind of defeat some of the, uh, the governor for Al Maliki's army, like the, the army of Iraq. So all those things glorify them, and those young generation, the young uh, men, they kind of excited because of uh, all those, you know, victory and exaction and um, killing thing. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> so what do Muslim think about ISIS? Muslim worldwide has condemned everything that ISIS does because they do behave, they they kill people. I mean, like they kidnap people, they enslave them, oppression of women, aggression against Christian, Jewish, and the Muslim who disagree with them. Because I've seen now uh, this video where, where like a uh, Muslim, like it was like Saddam, it was the Iraq army, where, but this Iraq army was defeated by ISIS. So what they would do, they would be like, oh, come forward. If you say you are Sunni, they will let you go. But if you say you Shia, they will kill you. So. That's that. That mean that's why like a lot of people, a lot of Muslims disagree. Uh, Muslims should not kill another Muslim. That's one thing. And the second thing, they said they're talking about the jihad. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the definition of the jihad, which means a struggle, and which you struggle to do everything in the daily life. So it's not like a violence a struggle. It's most of the time a struggle just for everyday life. But the ISIS is using that jihad for killing. Muslims only use jihad for killing when there's like a defensive action. When Muslim communities attack, they defend themselves, and that's called also a jihad. But most of the time, the rest of the day, struggling, find something to eat, struggling, find something, somewhere to go, and everything, those are also struggle called jihad. Next slide, please. So how does ISIS justify his action in the name of Islam? So this is what I was trying to say. Jihad, they're using jihad, which is the holy war, and they also try to um, they try to convince a lot of, of the people that is the suicide bomber say if you that you came and kill uh, die for us or bleed for us you you go to paradise you have like seven virgin and all those promises so when you die now because in the Muslim they said no matter what you do if you die God is gonna ask you what you do of good or bad in this world but if you die in this way you don't you don't get to be asked you just go straight straight up to paradise. So that's why they kind of uh, uh, promise them. So a lot of people just believe them and just they join the cause also. And next slide please. <laughs> so here we got, so I, thought, I already talked about the martyrdom and the, and the immediate entry into paradise I already talked about it too. So next slide please. So verse of Quran are, are, are taken out of context. So an example of this will be, so like in the, the Quran said, the people of the book, do not touch them, do not touch their life, do not touch their area of prayer, and then do not destroy their properties. So people of book in the Quran mean Christian who has Bible, and Jewish who has Torah. So those are people of book. And he, what happened in ISIS thing, they think everybody else who is not Sunni is a kafir. A kafir is somebody who doesn't believe in that. So what happened is like, they think, in the in the Quran, the kafir, Christians are not a kafir because they have they believe in God, they have a Bible. And Jewish are not kafir, they believe in God, they have the book too. But then people who doesn't believe in God is usually kafir. But I should say that everybody is kafir if you're not Sunni. You know, so there's uh -huh. only Sunni and Sunni only. Next up, please. Uh -huh. So you got some examples here. So I was, I was just trying to recall the goal of US and his allies, you are you guys already know that better than me. In the Middle East was in Syria creating a moderate military opposition to such so Assad regime. So to, to bring a change. <coughs> in Iraq was to create a political alliance between Sunni and Shia group. So they can they can work together. But that, that has failed because the Nuri al Maliki, who was the, the Prime Minister of Iraq, this guy was a Shia. So he kind of take it kind of monopolized like the, the control of the, the power of onto Shia only. That's why Sunni group they feel left out, and that's why they disagree and they start attacking Shia. Uh, next slide, please. 
So in this order, it's like murdering innocent, persecuting Christian and Jews, uh, destruction of churches, attack against Christian, directly violated the Quranic teaching. When, when I was saying the people of the book, who live, this is the Quran that said, who lives and, and how, whose life and house and worship the Quran, pro prophet saying that those are commanded to safeguard. So don't touch to their lives, don't touch to their houses, don't touch to their uh, area of worship. So those are for, uh, like forbidden in, the, in Islam. But ISIS touch all that. They kill people. They kill people even in the uh, they kill Christian, Jewish. They kill people even in the, in the mosque. They kill people in the church. So they just extremists. And the Muslim disagree completely with everything they do. Um, next slide, please. So um, th this was like a, th there is a no confusion to any religion. This is a part of Quran that I try to call too. It says there is no confusion. So you cannot force somebody to join your religion. He said, if God want everybody to be in one single religion, he would have done so. So there's no confusion in religion. People, it's like religious freedom is even justified in the Quran too. And this is the part of the Quran that you can find it. And next slide, please. So here, that's, that's, I think this is the last uh, slide. So here, I just want to give you an um, a, a overview of Islam. So Islam, in general, are pro-Bosnia, pro-Gaza, pro Chechenia, And this is how they keep, a lot of people would be like, uh, Muslims are against Israel. And this is where they come from. It's like, you cannot be pro-Gaza and be pro-Israel. It's like, you cannot be pro black or mad and pro police <laughs> But yeah, that's what happened here. It's like, it's not like the people don't like Israel, but they just think that Gaza a Muslim thing that Gaza also needed defense. So that's why people label Muslim as anti-Israel. So when you see Al-Qaeda, I mean, the, the difference between Al-Qaeda and um, ISIS is Al-Qaeda was a small group attacking very symbolic area, like monuments and stuff like that, to have attention of the population. But what ISIS do, ISIS attack and kill civilians to have attention. So those are two, and then also Al Qaeda was not claiming no territory, but ISIS is claiming the territory, so they're doing a territorial battle. So if you see the difference between Sunni and Shia, also, Shia, Sunni are Saudi Arabia and the Gulf, and a lot of other Sunni little group um, around the world. But Shia is mostly Iran and some part of Turkey um, and some part of uh, Syria also. So you can see that. But the thing is like uh, the target, the first target of a Sunni is a Shia. And the first target of a, a Shia is a Sunni first. And then the second target of uh, a Sunni will be, um, will be um, what's it called, he Israel. No, for Shia is Israel, the second target. So they don't like Sunni first, and then they don't like Israel. Well, Sunni, Shia 